What is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am here to do my Extreme Rules 2018 prediction. Now, Extreme Rules is the next WWE pay per view and it happens this Sunday. Live on the WWE Network from the PBG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, this, uh, this year's Extreme Rules is pretty stacked. We got, as of right now, eight big matches with all the WWE titles on the line. So, I'm very excited to do these predictions for you guys this year and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, our record coming into the Extreme Rules this year after our last WWE pay per view, which was Monday in the bank last year in Chicago we went six and four so our overall record coming in is 126 60 and one so we're coming in hot 2018 has been a good year for us when it comes to WWE pay-per-views we've only had one non-winning record which was at Wrestlemania and I'm looking to keep it that way so hopefully in this video we will continue the winning ways we're on a three pay-per-view winning streak hopefully in this video we will make it four now, this is the first of two, that's right, two big videos that will be up on the channel today, so hopefully you guys will show your love on both these videos. Now, right after this video, I'll have my full G1 Climax 28, 2018 predictions up on the channel, and you'll find out who I'm picking to win this year's G1 and challenge for the IWGP Heavyweight title at Wrestle Kingdom 13 next year. So I'll have my full predictions right after this video. So remember, two big videos will be up on the channel today, so hopefully you guys will show your love on both of those videos. As always, show your love by watching the video, super kicking that like button, and voicing your opinions and your picks in the comment sections down below. Now, this is your first time watching my channel as a first time viewer, and this is your first video. Boy, you picked a good one if you're a huge WWE fan like myself and you're ready for this year's Extreme Rules. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I am JT Dangerous Thing. Welcome to the club because this club is just to. Whoop, whoop. Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these predictions. Now, if they do add any other matches to this card, I'll have them in the comment section down below, but I'm going to do the eight matches that have already been confirmed. Now, let's start off with the first matchup. It is for the SmackDown Tag Team title. Starting off with the challengers. They are making their pay-per-view, they're, they're making their return to pay-per-view after a five-year absence. They are the former tag team champions and they're looking to become the next SmackDown tag team champions. They are Candy Kane and Daniel Bryan, Team Hell No. And Team Hell No is challenging the reigning and defending SmackDown tag team champions, Harper, Rowan, the Bludgeon Brothers. Now starting off with Team Hell No, what a surprise we uh, what a surprise this is i mean 5 years since team hell no have been on pay per view and ironically enough here's the dangerous fact the last time team hell no was on pay per view was at this very event 5 years ago at the extreme rules 2013 and they were the tag team champions at that time when when they lost to the shield team of Rollins and Roman Reigns before Roman Reigns became the big dog so it's going to be very interesting to see team hell no work like a team like they used to i mean they had did they did have a great uh, match against the usos uh, a few a few thir a few Tuesdays ago on SmackDown Live, so their chemistry is there. But now they're going to be on pay per view for the first time in five years. Now the the two biggest questions coming from me on this team is one, is there ring rust with Kane because we haven't seen Kane on pay per view in a long time because he's been doing his mayor thing, and number two, which this is a huge rumor. Now take this with a grain of salt, folks. Daniel Bryan has not. I repeat, has not re-signed with the WWE. So could these couple pay-per-views be the last time we're going to be seeing Daniel Bryan in a WWE ring? Because if they can't re-sign him, he may be going to New Japan. He may be going back to Ring of Honor. So take this rumor with a grain of salt. Daniel Bryan has not re-signed with the company yet. Then on the other side, you have... The Bludgeon Brothers, who have been the tag team champions since WrestleMania, they have had a dominant run as the SmackDown tag team champions. They have taken on the best tag teams on SmackDown, other than Sanity. They have knocked out the New Day, Usos, and Gallows and Anderson. And this this team they are going up against is maybe their biggest threat since winning the tag team title. So, coming from me in this matchup for the SmackDown tag team titles, man. I really think Kane is the guy who's going to get pinned here. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking the Bludgeon Brothers to retain the SmackDown Tag Team titles and defeat Team Hell No. And now the next matchup. It is an Extreme Rules match for the Raw Women's Championship and see who will be facing Rowdy Ronda Rousey at SummerSlam for this 
exact title. Starting off with the challenger. She is looking to be, regain the Raw Women's Championship and end this rivalry between her former best friend. She is the irresistible force, Nia Jax. And Nia Jax is challenging the reigning and defending Raw Women's Champion. She is looking to continue her summer of bliss. She is the goddess of the WWE. She is Little Miss Bliss. Alexa Bliss. Now, this is a rematch of what happened last month at Money in the Bank in Chicago, where Alexa Bliss cashed in her women's Money in the Bank ladder uh, contract on Nia Jax and cost in Ronda Rousey her shot at the Raw Women's title, in which she pinned Nia Jax and became a three time Raw Women's champion. Already, she's already a five time women's champion. Now, this is Nia Jax's automatic rematch, and it's Maybe right up her alley. Extreme Rules, which we already know the Extreme Rules weapons we're going to be seeing. Kendo sticks, chairs, tables. That's about it because that's what happens. That's that's WWE Extreme Rules for you. Just uh, Extreme Rules PG, uh, PG edition. So, and with Ronda Rousey being in the front row, she is going to be seeing who will be the Raw Women's Champion going into her. Her shot at that title at SummerSlam this year. So whoever wins this matchup is easily going to lose to the baddest woman on the planet coming from me, Ronda Rousey. So coming from me in this Extreme Rules matchup for the Raw Women's title. Again, Nia, she was not really, she was not really, like, I was, like, Nia Jax was a great champion, but she wasn't a, like, a credible champion. So, coming from me in this matchup, I think they're going to stick with the champ. I'm going to go with Alexa Bliss to retain the Raw Women's title by any means and defeat Nia Jax. So, at SummerSlam, it's going to be Bliss Rousey for the Raw Women's title. And now the next matchup. It is for the United States Championship. Starting off with the challenger. He is looking to finally win his first singles title in the WWE. He is the former two-time NXT champion, the former... Um, IWGP Heavyweight Champion. He is the King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura. And Nakamura is challenging the reigning and defending United States Champion. He has been a fighting U.S. Champion and he's looking to defend it here. He is the charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy. Now, starting off with Shinsuke Nakamura. Coming from me, this is a must win match for Shinsuke. I mean, after countless unsuccessful attempts at winning the WWE title from AJ Styles this year, he has been on a slump. He hasn't won a pay-per-view match since the Royal Rumble. He hasn't won since January, folks. And he's got an opportunity to make history here. Now, history is definitely on Shinsuke's side. Here's the dangerous fact. The United States title has changed hands three times at Extreme Rules. So, the title has has gone to the challengers more often than the champion. And here's another huge dangerous fact. Nakamura could be only, could 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 win this matchup and be only the third ever Japanese-born United States champion. Now the last Japanese-born United States champion that happened in the WWE was all the way back 17 years ago when Tajiri won the US title. So it's been 17 years, 2001, since a Japanese-born wrestler won the US title. So there's a lot at stake for Shinsuke Nakamura in this matchup. Then on the other side, you have Jeff Hardy, who has been a fighting United States champion. He has taken on all comers in his United States Championship Challenge. He knocked off The Miz a couple weeks ago. He's knocked off um, Eric Young. And he's been a fighting champion. He went back to the old school TNA face paint with his with his eyes on his eyelids. He's His eyes are now like Brother Nero when he did in TNA. So I'm happy Jeff Hardy is the champion, but he's still banged up. If you don't know, he is still banged up. He's got nagging injuries. And I think this is the best time to take the title off of him so he can recoup and recover from those injuries. So coming from me in this matchup for the United States title, I am taking Shinsuke Nakamura to finally win his first singles title on the main roster and become only the third Japanese-born United States champion and defeat Jeff Hardy. And now the next matchup, it is for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Starting off with the Challengers. They are looking to become the next Raw Tag Team Champions. And they have been undefeated as a tag team since Miz has moved to 
from Raw to SmackDown. They are Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas, the B team. And the B team is challenging the reigning and defending Raw Tag Team Champions. They are the Woken Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt. They're the leaders of worlds. Now, uh, this matchup I don't much care about, so I'm going to make this pick fast. This tag team division on Raw is shit. And I really think whoever wins this is going to be facing AOP at SummerSlam. So coming from me in this matchup for the Raw Tag Team titles, I am taking the Deleter of Worlds, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, to retain the Raw Tag Team titles and defeat the B-Team. So Authors of Pain, Deleter of Worlds, SummerSlam. And now the next matchup. It is a Money in the Bank rematch, and it is for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Starting off with... The challenger. She is looking to finally win the SmackDown Women's Championship. She is looking to get back on track and she is looking to end the champion's reign. She is the former undefeated Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. And Asuka is challenging the reigning and defending SmackDown Women's Champion. He, she will be accompanied by the the chinless wonder, James Ellsworth. She, he is, she is the princess of Staten Island. She is Carmella. Now, at Money in the Bank, Asuka was on the cusp of winning her first SmackDown Women's Championship in which the surprise of all surprises, James Ellsworth, came back and cost Asuka the SmackDown Women's title. So this is, the, this is Asuka's chance to get some revenge and this is her automatic rematch. Now, starting off with Asuka, this is Asuka's last chance coming from me. She's already had two opportunities at this belt, and she's 0-2. And ever since she lost to Charlotte at WrestleMania, she was damn near impossible to pin before that. Now, ever since that loss, she has been she has just been nerfed by the WWE, just like Shinsuke has been Shinsuke has been. And I think she's only I think her last win on pay-per-view was I think early in 2018. So it's been a long time for Asuka to win a singles one-on-one -on -one match. And since that uh, submission loss to Charlotte at WrestleMania, she has just not been the same woman I remember her on Raw or NXT. She has just been nerfed by the WWE. And coming from me, she doesn't win. It's time to move on because I think Becky Lynch will be the next challenger for that belt at SummerSlam. Then on the other side, you have Carmella, who has been the champion since the night after WrestleMania. She has beaten Charlotte not once but twice. She has knocked off. Uh, she has knocked off Oscar already, and she has a chance to knock off both Charlotte and Oscar not once but twice. And with the return of James Ellsworth, she definitely has the advantage because you already know Mella is money. So coming from me in this Money in the Bank rematch for the SmackDown Women's Title. Man, this one's tough. Um, I would like before, like before, I was really hoping Oscar was going to win this title sooner rather than later. But now, after losing, after she lost that Money in the Bank, I was thinking it's time to give this belt back to Becky. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm taking Carmella to retain the SmackDown Women's Title by any means and defeat Oscar. So at SummerSlam, it's going to be Becky versus Carmella for the SmackDown Women's Title. And now the next matchup. It is a first time, first ever meeting between these two one on one, and it's the Battle of the Spears. Featuring on one side, he is the former TNA World Champion, the former MMA star, the former United States Champion, and a two time ECW Champion. He is the Destroyer, Bobby Lashley, and his opponent, and his, and he is facing off against the former WWE Champion, the self proclaimed uncrowned. Universal Champion, the man who says this, that that ring is his yard. He is the self-proclaimed big dog. Ooh, ah, Roman Reigns. Now, coming from me, this is for the number one contendership for the Universal Champion, Brock Lesnar, at SummerSlam, if Brock is going to be defending at SummerSlam. So whoever wins this is going to be the definitive number one contender. Now... Starting off with Bobby, he has had, ever since he has come back, his matches have been kind of stale. I mean, I wonder how, what, why Bobby wanted to come back. Yes, I mean, he still looks amazing. He's got the headband gimmick, which is always good, but he's just not impressing me since he's come back. Then on the other side, you have Roman Reigns, who hasn't impressed anybody. He's been bitching. He's been saying, there's the... The WWE is keeping me away from Brock Lesnar. He's, you know, being the he's trying to be a a, a 
bad, uh, a cool heel, which obviously is not working, i.e. he's Poochie from The Simpsons, if you get that reference, and WWE is just trying so damn hard to get Roman Reigns over with the fans, and it's just not working, and with these two, with these two guys with the same finisher, the spear, it's going to take two from Lashley, in which Roman will kick out, and it will take one spear from Roman to pin Bobby Lashley. So that's kind of the obvious. So coming from me in this matchup to determine the number one contender for the Universal Championship at SummerSlam, as much as I want to see Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar, which could be amazing, that's not WWE's standards. They're going to go with their money man that who hasn't beaten Brock Lesnar legitimately. So I'm going to go with the the self-proclaimed big dog, Roman Reigns, to defeat Bobby Lashley and become once again the number one contender for the Universal Championship at SummerSlam. And now the next matchup. This is one of the matches I, I, I am going to be really excited for. It is a 30-minute Iron Man match for the coveted Intercontinental title. Starting off with the challenger. He is looking to regain the Intercontinental Champion. He is a Grand Slam Champion and he's looking to make Monday nights his night. He is the architect. He is the Kingslayer. He is CrossFit Jesus and every time his music hits, you already know it's time to... He is Seth freaking Rollins and Seth Rollins is challenging the reigning and defending Intercontinental Champion accompanied by his bodyguard the, the former NXT champion, Drew McIntyre, he is the self-proclaimed show-off, Dolph Ziggler. Now, the night after Money in the Bank saw the biggest shock of the whole of, of 2018 when Dolph Ziggler beat Seth Rollins to become once again the Intercontinental Champion for the sixth time. Now, nobody saw that coming, including myself, because I was thinking... You have a fantastic Intercontinental Champion with Seth Rollins, and then you drop it off to Dolph Ziggler, who who came back after who who came back, who got drafted to Raw and really hasn't done anything. And then he brought Drew McIntyre with him, and he's and Drew McIntyre is the bodyguard of uh, Dolph Ziggler. And then their their last meeting happened a few weeks ago on Monday Night Raw in a classic main event for this belt where Seth Rollins was on the cusp of regaining the belt in which Drew McIntyre did what the bodyguard usually does, um, comes in and screws Seth Rollins from winning back the Intercontinental title, in which Kurt Angle just said, you know what, we're going to have these two in a 30-minute Iron Man match. Now, I was thinking as soon as I heard this, you do pay-per-views for four hours. You guys couldn't make this a 60-minute Iron Man match? I mean, it's a first time ever. I mean, the WWE title has been defended in this this type of match, but never on pay per view has the Intercontinental title been defended in this type of uh, this in this kind of Iron Man match. So it's a first ever for the Intercontinental title. But I was just thinking, four hours you could have just had one full hour be this matchup. But as always, WWE likes to water things down and make it half an hour instead of a classic hour because we haven't seen a we haven't seen a our Iron Man match since 2009. So, so there you go. Now, history is definitely on the side of Seth Rollins here at Extreme Rules. Here's the dangerous fact: the Intercontinental Title has changed hands four times at Extreme Rules. So, the challenger has a lot of has history definitely on its side. So, coming from me in this 30-minute Iron Man match for the Intercontinental Title, this one is going to steal. The show coming from me. This one's going to be a classic. I can see the score being 3-2, maybe 4-3. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking... Because I love, would love to see Rollins in that Universal title picture because he deserves it. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking Dolph Ziggler to retain the Intercontinental title and defeat Seth Rollins. And now the main event. It is for the coveted WWE Championship. Starting off with the challenger. He is a former multiple time United States Champion. And he is looking to win his very first WWE Championship in his entire WWE career. He will be accompanied by the Maestro Mayhem, Aiden English. And every day of the week, every month, every day of the year, it is... It's recent day. 
Bulgarian. He is the lion of Bulgaria and the Bulgarian brute Rusev. And Rusev is challenging the reigning, defending, undisputed WWE champion, easily the greatest WWE champion since CM Punk. And he is looking to continue his phenomenal run as champion. And if you know his music, and I know you guys do, you know who I'm talking about. He is the phenomenal AJ Styles. Now, this is a huge title matchup. I mean, starting off with Rusev, he won a gauntlet match against Samoa Joe. Big E, Daniel Bryan, and Miz to get this opportunity. And this is his biggest opportunity since he's been in the WWE. I mean, this man who has the greatest cult following in on SmackDown with the Rusev Day. And he has earned this opportunity. He has earned this opportunity. And I think this is his biggest opportunity in his career. Again, this is his biggest opportunity in his career. Now, I think WWE gave him this shot because, one, he has earned it. And, number two, it's a way to end Rusev Day. Because WWE has uh, has never been keen on this Rusev Day thing. It just, just caught on. And you know how WWE is. If they haven't manufactured it, they're going to try to kill it as fast as possible. And I really think that's what's going to happen here. Then on the other side, you have AJ Styles, the reigning WWE champion, who has been the champion since uh, he's been the champion for eight months. He won this belt all the way back of November of last year, and he has been one hell of a WWE champion. I mean, he's been going, he's been going through wars with Shinsuke Nakamura throughout 2018, and now he's got a different challenger. Now, history is definitely on AJ Styles' side. Now, here's a dangerous fact: the WWE title has changed hands only twice at Extreme Rules. Champions here are five, two, and one. Now, the last time the WWE title changed hands at Extreme Rules was all the way back in 2011 when John Cena defeated The Miz and John Morrison in the steel cage match. So, history is definitely on the side of AJ Styles. Now, with SummerSlam coming up next month, there's only one person I think could challenge and maybe end AJ Styles' this fan this phenomenal title run. It's the man who has had AJ's number throughout his entire career. And that man is the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. And just that maybe having that matchup at SummerSlam, I cannot wait. So coming from me in this matchup for the WWE title, do I, do I think Rusev can win the WWE title? No. I think he I think he'll give AJ Styles a run for his money, but I do not think he will win the WWE title. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking the phenomenal AJ Styles to retain the WWE title and defeat Rusev and end Rusev Day. And those are my Extreme Rules 2018 predictions. Now I want to thank you guys so very much for watching. Comment below who do you have winning that matchup between AJ Styles and Rusev? Who you got? I'm I'm all going to be down for AJ Styles winning that. Who do you have between Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns? And who do you have winning that 30-minute Iron Man matchup between Rollins and Ziggler? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment. Like it and, of course, reply right back to you. Because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel. Now, I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Now, before you guys go, you guys can never forget to do this. That like button, comment, share with your friends, of course, super kick! That like button, like only you guys can, of course, you can never forget to do this as well. Super that subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous, dangerous lines, and I will see you guys later today for my New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 28, 2018 predictions. Later days, guys, and peace!